Welcome to this video by R11 on a steel detailing project setup checklist. This video is going to cover how you can consolidate and standardize and organize information flow on your project to help prevent errors as well as schedule impacts that are typically caused or result from poor information flow. All right, so what are some of the challenges that we face as lead detailers? The first one that I often hear is that information is spread across lots of different documents, file folders, emails, design drawings, specifications. So information is spread out all over the place. Well, what ends up happening here is that lots of detailers, designers, and checkers, they're wasting a lot of time trying to go find and hunt down the information. And it really what this ends up also doing is that if information can't be easily found or the wrong version of that information um, is in a certain location or it's conflicting, then detailers may be working off of the wrong information and that can have schedule impacts as well as huge cost impacts and rework. Next, do you have an apples and oranges comparison between what one project manager does on a project versus another? This is something I often hear is you got a big organization with lots of different teams or squads and project manager A is using their own spreadsheets and their own information gathering um, versus project manager B. So what happens here is that your detailers and your checkers and designers have de decreased productivity because they're having to learn a new system even within your own organization between one project manager or one project and another. And oftentimes this creates inconsistent results and a learning curve for your people. And and it also makes it hard for your people to move between one project or another, or if you join uh, different people together on one big super project, it becomes hard to uh, bring those processes and things together. Now, the third thing here is that, you know, oftentimes information isn't found in time. So, you know, design drawings and information isn't always 100% complete. And so you might have to write RFIs or there's questions that are going to come up on the project. Well, really, as a project manager and lead detailer, you want to find that information out as soon as possible. If you're not finding information until the last minute when you're in the middle of doing something and you're a day before submittal, the problem is, is you send out that question and your customer is going to say, why are you asking me this question now, a day or two days before you have to go for submittal? Because we're not going to get the answer in time. And so really, you don't want to be uh, on the blame side of that as far as not ans or asking the question in a timely manner to make sure that it doesn't have uh, much of a big impact to your schedule. So what would be the ideal solution here? Well, really, we want information consolidated into one location, and this will make it quick and easy for detailers, checkers, and designers to find the information that they need. We want all this information formatted uh, in the same way um, from project to project, so that way detailers can easily see how to do something on project A, and it's the same way when they do project B. And then also we want to make sure that information is found in time and we want to prevent delays that are caused by missing information or information coming in at the last minute. And we definitely don't want to be the cause of that last minute information gathering. All right, so let's see an example of where things can go wrong from poor information flow and organization. We've got a detail in our project and he didn't know that TC bolts or tension control bolts were being used on the job. And so instead, he had made all of his connections in the model based on uh, just normal heavy hex, uh, high strength bolts. Now, what ended up happening was the lead detailer did send out an email to all the project participants, but this email was sent out before this detailer came on board on the project. So it was in some team members inbox, but not in others. And what ended up happening is the detailer modeled all these connections without the proper clearance in mind for a torque gun for a tension control bolt installation. And so this didn't get caught until shop drawings were made and the checker just happened to notice this, that this detailer was not using TC bolts. Now what's the impact of a simple thing like this of not knowing whether to use TC bolts or just high strength bolts on the job? Well, dozens of hours get lost in rechecking and going back and redetailing and updating the model to make sure that those connections will work for TC bolts. Now, when you do all this work, not only is it changes in impact in the model, but you already had the drawings made. So now piece marks are changing in the model when you update your numbering or your piece marking. And this then causes drawings that you already had cleaned up to potentially be recleaned up again or have to be reviewed again um, because you had already cleaned them up before and they were in the checking process. Then the checker's got to go back and re-review and make sure you made all those changes. And sometimes even new drawings that weren't expected to be there are going to be created because of some of these connection changes. So 
This then leads to the fabrication submittal was late by three days, and you didn't know it was going to be late because you caught this way late in the process. Now, you know, this could, hopefully your fabricator's forgiving and he's okay with you and, and you've kind of caught it as soon as possible to let him know what's going on. But really, if this happens here where you're late for fabrication submittal, you know, sometimes this can actually have back charge impacts and it can affect the reputation of your detailing firm because really a fabricator just gets it in their mind that, hey, you know, this detailer doesn't meet their deadlines and doesn't get things done when they say they're going to. So what's the solution? Here we're going to have a consolidated project information sheet. It's going to be in one location in each of the project folders and the folder structure is consistent from one project to the other. Here you're going to have check boxes which check if items have been gathered and the information has been retrieved. If that information has not been retrieved and has to be gathered during the kickoff or during RFIs or emails or records of conversation, you're going to have records of that information and links to that here within this one single document. This helps ensure that nothing gets missed. If something's unchecked, you know as a lead detailer that you need to go back and find out what's going on and get things answered. And again, this same information sheet is going to be the same format and the same folder structure from one project to the next. So what's the process of using the project information sheet? Well, in step one, you're first going to try to gather all the information from the design drawings, the scope sheet from the fabricator, uh, specifications that might be provided with the project, as well as the fabricator's detailing standards. In step two, if you can't find some of the items from those different things, then you're going to organize an agenda of a project kickoff, and you're going to see if you can ask the fabricator those items during that meeting. Again, if you do find that information, you'll reference back to your project kickoff notes here within the project information sheet, and you can then check those items as being complete if you were able to get that information. In step three, if even after the project kickoff, the fabricator doesn't have the answers or they tell you that you need to generate RFIs, that's what you'll begin to do. You'll create individual questions or requests for information and you'll have those documents then referenced and linked back into your project information sheet. This helps make sure that you have a complete information flow and trail of all the different things that you're gathering information for. And again, once you get RFI responses, you'll come back to the project information sheet and you'll check that that information has been gathered and you'll have a reference to the original document so that way there's a trail and a story for all the detailers, designers, and checkers to follow. So what are some of the results of working with a centralized project information sheet? Well, first, we're going to be able to find up-to-date information very quickly on the project because everything is in one central location and all the team members know exactly where to go get it. Then we're going to have consistency and scalability on our projects. Since the format of organizing all that project information is the same from project A to project B, it's going to be easy for detailers to learn and interchange and work from project to project. Also, using the checklist items, we'll be able to see what information is missing early on in the project. And we won't be finding information late in the game or asking questions late in the game. We'll be able to see exactly what we need to find and ask early on. Then we're going to see improved productivity. When people have the right information at the right time and they're not waiting for things, they're able to easily move through the flow of their jobs and the different tasks that are at hand. And again, this all results in reduced risk of errors caused by missing or incorrect information and a schedule crunch that can be oftentimes happen if you're asking questions or finding information late on the project. 